A vote a day seems to be Britain's way. Theresa May is facing the heat. Lawmakers are asking her to give a date for leaving office now. Wonder why? Because these lawmakers are upset with Theresa May for bringing in rebel lawmakers to get her deal passed in the House of Commons. The very same deal that has already been rejected twice in the House of Commons. As we speak, Prime Minister May's attempt have hit, attempts have hit a dead end. The Democratic Unionist Party has rejected May's personal plea for support. She has now ruled out bringing a third vote on her deal. It is with great regret that I have had to conclude that as things stand, there is still not sufficient support in the House to bring back the deal for a third meaningful vote. The whole Brexit is in a shambles. May came to power on the back of the Brexit promise. If that promise is not fulfilled, should she resign? That is the million dollar question. She set a date to resign if it means she gets the deal over the line. I think it's very important that everyone recognises that this is an immensely serious week. We need to make sure that we leave the European Union and we do so in an orderly fashion. I hope as many people as possible recognise that that means supporting the Prime Minister and making sure that we get her deal through. Can you get the votes you need this week? I believe we can and I think it's critically important that we do. The country sent a clear instruction at the time of the referendum. 17.4 million people said that we need to vote uh, to leave the European Union. The Prime Minister is honouring that. She's doing everything she can in order to get the deal over the line and we should support her in that effort. Right now there's no set date for the UK's withdrawal from the EU. Let me sum up the situation in a nutshell. Brexit deadline has been extended to the 22nd of May but there's a rider. This extension is valid only if the House agrees to May's deal by the 29th of this month. If that fails, and that's highly likely, Britain could leave the European Union without a deal on the 12th of April. So what is today's vote about? It's about the government's next step. Today's Brexit lawmakers are trying to find an alternative. The discussion today will be on a government motion on a statement made by Theresa May 10 days ago. It is extremely complicated, I agree. Theresa May had said that the best forward, the best foot forward will be to leave the EU in an orderly fashion with a deal, but she has backed away. There is no support. Now lawmakers want fresh amendments and here's the fun part. European Union has already ruled out any amendment to, the, to this deal sealed already by the Prime Minister. So what are they voting on? These amendments are not legally binding at all. Do you think the Prime Minister should resign to break the Brexit impasse? No, I think the Prime Minister is doing the right thing, right thing, thinking about the national interest about this country and trying to end this chaos by getting this agreement through. Do you think the MPs can build a consensus around any alternatives to the PM's Brexit deal? Uh, we'll see what will happen this week in terms of the possibility of additional votes. But I'm still committed to trying to work with the Prime Minister to get the withdrawal agreement through. That's the best way to end this chaos. So the talks go fine. That is, if at all, the House agrees on something. Wait for it. There could be another vote tomorrow which is unlikely given the UK's track record on Brexit and fears are on the rise on the ground over a no-deal Brexit. Over the weekend, remember, hundreds of thousands of people marched on the streets. They were anti-Brexit protesters. They wanted a second referendum. And sloganeering was on the rise. The, slo the slogans basically said, put it to the people. That chance summarizes the frustration of the people of Britain. It's clear that Theresa May is on the brink. Her prime ministership and the fate of Brexit, both hanging by the thread. Let's turn to Europe. Xi Jinping's Belt and Road Initiative has arrived in Europe through Italy. Some say it's as iconic a moment as Marco Polo's Odyssey to China. The Italian government has heaped praise on itself for signing deals with China, deals worth a whopping two and a half billion euros. That's roughly three billion dollars. What's more, it also calls the signing a victory for Made in Italy. Il Made in Italy, l'Italia, vincono le imprese italiane. La firma dell'MOU sulla Via della Seta ha un valore solo per gli accordi privati fino a 20 miliardi di euro. Solo gli accordi firmati qui oggi in sostanza hanno un valore di 2,5 miliardi di euro. Over the last couple of weeks, the China-Italy camaraderie has become a talking point. But the rest of Europe is not exactly kicked about the Belt and Road Initiative, at least as much as Italy. In fact, Italy's willingness to join the BRI has led to concern 
in France and Germany. Chinese President Xi Jinping is in France to engage in talks with President Macron. He is expected to discuss issues related to the BRI with Germany as well. Avec le calme et l'authenticité. Niceties apart, Xi Jinping's state visit comes at a critical time. There are concerns in the West over Beijing's growing economic and diplomatic influence. Site de ce réveil européen. Depuis le début de mon mandat, j'appelle à ce qu'il y ait véritablement une prise de conscience et la défense d'une souveraineté européenne. Je dirais enfin, sur des sujets aussi importants que la Chine, nous l'avons. Le texte de la Commission européenne est à cet égard un très bon texte. President Xi is calling for more trade and investment between China and France and China and Germany. In return, France wants China to provide more access to its markets. But what does the European Union want? It wants to pursue a bilateral relationship with Beijing as a bloc of 28 nations, not individual bilateral agreements. France and Germany have also been mulling policies to limit China's economic influence. Specifically, they want to impose more stringent screening measures on foreign investment. And such a stance is not acceptable to countries like Greece and Portugal because China's investment has become the bedrock for these countries. Case in point is the port of Piraeus, Greece's largest port. It is now majority owned by the government of China. So what is Xi Jinping trying to do, to, do in Europe? Win over France and if possible Germany too. And the timing of this is also crucial. Washington's protectionism has hurt not only Beijing but also Brussels. If Xi Jinping can bring on board these two large economies in Europe, the influence of his BRI project will soar. But it's not going to be an easy task. France and Germany have argued that the BRI lacks transparency and has problems with financing. With the U.S. keeping a close tab on the burgeoning ties, the next few days are going to be crucial. Europe will be better served if it does a status check, a fact check. Already, China has stakes in 13 ports in this continent. That's 10% of Europe's shipping container capacity. And these ports are also of strategic importance, even more than the trade benefits that it will bring to China. The Brexit episode of 2015 would also ring an alarm bell. China's BRI has created debt traps wherever it has gone, from Pakistan to Sri Lanka to Malaysia. And with several Euro European nations in dire need of investment now, an open acceptance of China could lead to structural debt, something that they could do without. China, for its part, says that the BRI is a win-win situation. It wants to encourage Europe by heaping praise on Italy. But Italy is not all of Europe. And political economy is not a zero-sum game as Beijing wants the entire European Union to believe.